Welcome to another Django for Everybody code walkthrough. In this, I am going to walk through the um, Hello World application that you've got to do. This is the DIY part of the course where we've been developing an application for a while and uh, you've been modifying an existing application, local library and its catalog, uh, local library project catalog application. Um, and it's time for you to start fresh. And I want you to really understand uh, what's going on. So I'm gonna go through in uh, some great details. So this tells you how to get started. Um, and we're going to assume that uh, you're running on your local computer. If you're still running Python anywhere, that's okay. I've got another video for that. So somewhere you've got a folder called Django Projects. Um, and so I've got my folder in, this is a Macintosh, and I've done all of the installation. Um, I sort of followed this installation. Now, the, the weird thing is, is there's so many different ways that you can install uh, Python 3 and Django on your computer. You might use Anaconda or Miniconda or PIP or whatever. And so I, I haven't given you like every single possible uh, version of how you might do that. You have to kind of figure a bit of that out on your own. I've been giving you some online resources. But hopefully, when it's all said and done, whether you've done a virtual environment or not, um, you have things like Python 3 running, and you have um, Django, um, minus M Django, Python 3 minus M Django version, and um, you can look at uh, what is your current uh, pip in mine, all my extensions. You might not even be using pip for your extensions, but if I say pip freeze, I use pip 3 to install them. Yeah, I see all the versions of all my extensions. And if I look through here, for example, I can find um, Django extensions. And that means that I have Django extensions. And some of the problems that people have are like when they don't have the right extensions installed. So here I am in Django projects. And if I do an LS, you see all the projects that I've got. I've got the local library in my test site. Those are from before. This is, I'm going to, I've, DJ Free is the one you're going to work on, but you're going to work on that and add stuff to it. And so that's a later version of it. I made another one that's just this first Hello World, so I can take a look at it. And I named it first. And so you would do a Django Admin Start Project DJ Free, but I did a Django Admin Start Project first. And that's just the name of it. And then I went into that folder. And so I'm going into the first folder. Oops. First. And then I did a Python 3 manage py start app home. And so this shows that I've got a home folder. Then this first folder, which is the project wide settings.py and project wide urls.py. And of course, the db.sqli3. Now, at this point, when you're in this folder and you've got these things set up, it might not hurt to do a Python 3 manage.py shell because. If, if this doesn't work, then you've got some configuration wrong. So I, it, the fact that this worked and didn't blow up with a big traceback, that suggests that I've got all the right stuff installed and um, it's good. So I just have to control D to get out of here. So there we go. That's a funny looking shell prompt, but that's how it is on my Macintosh. So that's weird. Your Linux boxes and maybe your Windows boxes look a lot prettier than that. But the point is if you can't run Python 3 manage py shell, make migrations isn't going to work, et cetera, et cetera, because this manage.py loads up everything. It loads up all of your applications and all the urls.py and all the views.py. And so you think, oh, just start a shell. Well, no, this is completely construct the Django application and then start a shell in that Django application. So if there's anything wrong with any of your files, well, you gonna ignore this little part right here. I just, the dot quit didn't work. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the files that matter. So the first thing is that the folder that is the same name as the project folder, and my project folder is first. There is first slash settings dot py. And if you take a look, it tells you what to do here. A couple things I'll call your attention to. So leave debug true do not set debug to be false even though the comment right above it will encourage you to do it um, what it really is doing is 
telling it whether or not to give verbose error messages. When debug is true, the error messages are verbose. When debug is false, the error messages are cryptic. Well, you're writing software. You need all the help you can get when you make a mistake. You want verbose error messages. So debug equals true means verbose equals yes. Allowed host, this is one we've had to do every time we make one where we basically, that is the, the addresses from the internet that are allowed to access this application. And then uh, start, start project sets this up and then you have to add a home config, your home apps home config. And so that is the setup to get your home application loaded. And if you take a look at first slash urls.py, and by now, if you've done stuff in local library, your URLs are pretty complex. We've got pretty simple stuff. We're just going to include at the base URL all the home URLs, and then we're going to bring the admin in because uh, we're going to need that later. So that is the urls.py. So that is the first things. And there needs to be a, uh, in your home folder, urls.py, you have to create this file. But I give you the exact text of this file. And we're going to use a template view. And we're just going to have a template name. Remember that templates are global. And so we kind of re-add the, oops, we re-add the, I just, just drag that. I undid it. Uh, we add the home slash hello.html in a way to kind of create a global namespace of templates. Um, and so that's that's your urls.py and I completely give that to you. And then the last thing that you're going to edit is the home slash templates home. Again, you have to do this twice. Hello.html and against this last part, home slash hello.html matches the uh, the templates in the urls.py and you just put html in here and i just happen to put an h1 hello world now if we are sitting here and we've got these things all correct we just say python3 manage.py run server now this is going to connect to my local host 8000 127.001 slash colon 8000 that's port 8000 and if you've got one of these running in a different window it will say you the port is already busy but you're jacking into the port. If you all the way back, we talked about the request response cycle and servers. You should remember about ports and how servers grab onto ports so that they can listen for phone calls. So we are going to go into localhost 8000, actually just go on 27, doesn't matter. And so that retrieves our page. Now this shows a couple of cool things, you know, because it showed the get. And so one of the nice things is you can watch things as they go on and you see traceback errors and everything. And so, so I really like developing locally whenever I can because I can really quickly switch from one application to another. So let me show you how I will switch from one application to the other. I'm going to hit control C to blow this up. So now there is no server. And if I go to this, it's going to say, sorry, I can't get that. And now I'm going to say CD dot dot. I'm in my Django projects and I've got a whole bunch of things. Um, let's, let's go up one even more. And I've got DJ for e samples. So I've got this checked out. And there's a manage.py here. And I can say Python 3 manage py run server from this folder, which then runs that application. And now I can go to that exact same address and I have a completely different application running on it. So this, this, and I can see the errors in favicons. This one actually has a favicon, I think. Hmm, I don't know why the favicon didn't. Oh, maybe it doesn't do it for localhost. Um, and so this ability to move around really quickly and start and stop servers in your Django application and the ability to watch this stuff as it's running is a real important part of why you'd run a local server if possible. And of course, I gave you a... Uh, uh, installing Django locally that does its best because each thing is going to be a little bit different and uh, and away you go. Okay, so so in general, this is how my Hello World application is structured. There's really only four files that you need to edit and get right, and then you have to most the mostly the hard part for local running is getting your installation all done. So I hope this helps. Cheers.